That means that Stanford will get the ball. They have the number one return team in the country. And Ty Montgomery is the man back deep. We are underway in Pasadena. This is Montgomery. The Spartans are going to see what he's got. And he's out to the 24-yard line. So here to help us introduce Stanford's starting quarterback is 1970 Heisman Trophy winner and 1971 Rose Bowl MVP Jim Plunkett. The Cardinal starting quarterback for today's game is Kevin Hogan from McLean, Virginia. Kevin is 16-2 and two as a starter and seeking his second straight Rose Bowl victory. Good luck, Kevin, and go Stanford. So Herbie Kevin now brings them out. 6'4", 228 pounds, and he can fool you. He's got a good deep arm. He sure does. He has a deep arm, and he has quick feet. He can move around, and that's something he's going to have to do today against his Michigan State tenacious, aggressive defense. Tyler Gaffney is the eye back. He gets the first play up the middle. And the middle of that Spartan defense met him head on. And, uh, Herbie, let's take a look now at some of our impact players. We've already mentioned uh, the two fellows from Stanford. Yeah, 25, Tyler Gaffney. He'll have his hands on the football at least 25 times tonight. Ty Montgomery's going to make some plays in the passing game. Also see him on reverses. Danico Salen has to step up. He leads this team in tackles, needs to provide the leadership. And Darquez Denard, they'll keep him on an island along with Trey Wayans. He's got to make plays and hold up in one-on-one -on -one coverage against a talented group of Stanford receivers. Hewitt motions out for the Cardinal. Their first pass of the game. Throw it downfield, and it is caught at the 30-yard line by Michael Rector, one of the speedsters who steps up. So they went right at the corner. Now, this is the matchup that everybody wanted to see. Could Hogan take advantage of some outside one-on-one -on -one coverage? This is going to be a big part of this game. Michigan State literally begs you to take some chances. And Michael Rector, he's averaging 32 yards of reception this year. He only has 12 catches on the year, but he's been a big play receiver for the Cardinal attack, and he gets off to a great start here. They come back with that power eye look. Gaffney will try the left side, finds daylight. And he crosses the 30-yard line. Isaiah Lewis makes the stop. We're going to refer to this offensive line often because Herbie, you and I have talked. We think that this could be the best offensive line in the country. Yeah, Andrus Pete at the left tackle is just a, a man and will be the star next year. David Yankee, arguably the best lineman in the country. Wilkes has moved from guard to center. Kevin Dancer, Cameron Fleming, they've played so much football together. The continuity, the way they're coached by Mike Bloomgren, I would say they are the best offensive line, not just physically, but they're technicians. They take a lot of pride in it. Kajust is matched up one-on-one -on, -one on this play, and Hogan looks in that direction, can't find an opening, so he takes off himself and reaches the 26-yard line. Jones with the stop, one of the Spartan linebackers. Michigan State gets Stanford to third down. Remember, Michigan State, the best third down defense in the country, only allowing 27% of conversions. It's a big third down here to see after that, after that big play by Rector to see if they can slow down the Cardinal attack. And Wilkerson will check in as the running back here for this third down. Now Hewitt comes back to give Hogan a hand if they have to pick up a defensive player. Wilkerson, Hogan keeps it, steps up to the 20-yard line for a first down. That was a very nice bit of ball handling by the quarterback. It sure was. Hey, you know, Stanford has done this all year. They saved third downs for Kevin Hogan. He rides it, and then he pulls it. He's actually reading the outside linebacker, Twan Jones, number 34. Watch Twan Jones. He'll, he'll stay with the back. It allows Hogan to keep the football, and this is what we talked about. He doesn't have to do a lot with his feet, but just enough to keep the drive alive on third down, whether it's a scramble, creating, or a run like that to keep the sticks moving. Gaffney back on the field. Play action on the first down, and they slip it out to the outside of Montgomery with great speed. Across the 15-yard line, and finally pushed out of bounds right around the 10. In fact, he might have crossed the 10. He did indeed, I believe. And Curtis Drummond takes a chance here. Now, remember, Michigan State coming out of the Big Ten. They haven't seen a lot of receivers with the speed and playmaking ability at Ty Montgomery. They've been able to make these plays in the open field. Drummond that time bites on a little inside move and then the quickness and acceleration to get downfield. Drummond takes a chance here, Brent. This could have been a loss of four or five. Instead, the missed tackle there, and all of a sudden, he picks up three or four yards. 
So the officials say that he stepped out at the 16 yard line and they moved the spot back to that. Here's Gaffney on a little bit of a cutback. Breaks that first tackle loose. In zone. Touchdown, Stanford. Tyler Gaffney with the first score as he hits Pater. 16 yards. Talked about how multiple Stanford is, Brent. There's a look here in their first drive. Seven plays, 77 yards. You saw a little bit of everything there with the run game, the pass, the quarterback creating and making some plays there on third down. And it missed tackles by Michigan State, something we've not seen all year from the Spartans. Lewis missed a top opportunity there to stop Gaffney. He bounced off him and got into the end zone for a touchdown. Jordan Williamson adds the extra point after this touchdown run by Gaffney. So the young man who spent a year in the Pittsburgh Pirates baseball organization has a great love for football. And Stanford says, come on back. What makes something smart? We're led to believe that the more technology, the better it must be. But shouldn't smart make life simple? More stunning. More human. Because smart is thinking about what's on the other side of the screen as much as what's inside it. Introducing the ultra-intuitive M-Series Smart TV from Vizio. It's beautifully simple. It's as simple as this. At BNY Mellon, our business is investments. Managing them. Moving them. Making them work. We oversee 20% of the world's financial assets. And that gives us scale and insight no one else has. Investment management combined with investment servicing. Bringing the power of investments to people's lives. Invested in the world. BNY Mellon. A man. A man and his truck. And some company. And five hard landings. And eight sore vertebrae. And one bruised tailbone and three hours to make it all blissfully melt away. The all-new Chevy Silverado. There's no quieter full-size pickup. Strong for all the roads ahead. Gifts from the person who knows you best, you. That's powerful. Verizon. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. A 77-yard touchdown drive with Gaffney finishing it off from the 16-yard line has Stanford up ahead. And Jordan Williamson is a story. He had a hip problem, but he's been kicking very well in practice, and he will kick off. Coach Shaw telling us that he has a very long leg. Now, R.J. Shelton, a freshman from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, is back. And guess who his protector is? Kyler Ellsworth, number 41. That's right, the starting middle linebacker is right there, but they want this ball in Shelton's hands, and Shelton awaits it in the end zone. And there's Williamson's big leg. They'll take a knee coming out of the 25. But let's go back to this touchdown. Kevin Dancer, the right guard, involved in a double team here. It initially starts, and then he works his way up to Danico Salen, right in the middle of that offense, or that defense. Remember, we don't have Max Bola in there, but this is what I was talking about right here. Boom! Isaiah Lewis has a chance to stop him at the 10-yard line, and if he doesn't bring his arms and wrap up Tyler Gaffney, this is a different kind of back that he's facing than some of the backs he's faced in the Big Ten. He is a powerful runner. Spartans first play from the 25 yard line. Lankford on a play action. Connor Cook rolls out and completes the first pass to Gleicher. 
You're going to see a lot of this with Connor Cook rolling him away from the pressure. Stanford leads the nation in sacks with 40. Not only rolling him out, but getting the ball out of his hands quickly to the tight end, Gleichert. Not only does he get it out of his hands, but it gets the ball to Gleichert with a chance to work out in space, and he picks up some valuable yards for the Spartans. So a 17-yard gain on first down, and the ball is across the 41-yard line for Michigan State. Now it's Langford, hole on that right side of the line, and he crosses midfield before Ed Reynolds brings him down. Brett, they brought both the inside linebackers here, Scove and Tarpley. See him right into the middle. Great job of sustaining their blocks there by Treadwell and Allen, and it opened up very quickly. Great vision there. You see him hesitate and then explode through the hole. Langford's been doing that all year long. See Scove coming there, timing up the blitz. He's done that all, all year, but he is picked up perfectly there by Blake Treadwell, the leader of this offensive line. First down for the Spartans. They have barged into the Cardinal territory, trailing it by a touchdown. Likert's number 92. And Connor Cook going to keep it in the air. Fires near side. Incomplete. And you know, here to help us introduce Michigan State starting quarterback is a man who rushed for two touchdowns in the 1988 Rose Bowl. Here's Lorenzo White. The Spartan starting quarterback for the day is super sophomore Connor Cook from Hinkley, Ohio. For the season, he threw for 20 touchdown passes, five interceptions. Let's go, Connor. Let's go, Spartans. Irby, I did a lot of games with Zoe. Oh, he was a heck of a running back Boy, up there. Powerful, in his wow. powerful guy. Ahead of his time back you in 1980. Second down and 10 now for Connor Cook and the Spartans. And a handoff, and that's Kings, the wide receiver who lined up in the backfield. And he's pushed out of bounds on the far side at about the 42. Quick look at the impact players. Yeah, Langford, of course, has, has had just a terrific second half of the season. Eight straight 100-yard games. Tony Lippett, Benny Fowler, the entire group of receivers, much more productive than people give credit. Trent Murphy and Shane Scove, 93-11, and 11, will be all over the field for the Stanford defense. So this is the hurry up and wait. It looked like the Spartans were going to hit us with some tempo, but instead when they came up, they gave the coaches a chance to check the defensive set of Stanford, and here they come. Option look and Cook is going to be thrown for a loss. Can't get back to the line of scrimmage because number 93, Trent Murphy from Mesa, Arizona, brings him down. And Trent Murphy is a dandy. And they are they're trying to recognize the man under coverage because of what you talked about here. Here's Trent Murphy. He's an outside linebacker, but on third down, they'll put his hand in the ground. Watch him work through that offensive line. Jack Conklin, a freshman, matched up against one of the best players in the country. It's a mismatch, and Murphy takes advantage of it. So it's fourth down, and here comes one of the Big Ten's better punters, Mike Sadler. He can win field position, and Cody Whitfield will try to prove otherwise. Going to hope this one goes into the end zone, and it does. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. So Stanford scores on its first possession, and Michigan State is forced to punt. We'll be right back. truck and a 1200 pound passenger and two bodies with one mind and a ribbon that goes on her wall not in her hair the all-new chevy silverado with the best available towing in its class strong for all the roads ahead i'm a cheap bungee cord this guy bought me at the gas station perfect for holding down the lid on a box of sweaters 800 pounds of tailgating gear. Nah. And if you have cut rate insurance, the biggest hit of the day could be to your wallet. So get an Allstate agent and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. Are you in good hands? 
the 2014 Rose Bowl game is presented by Vizio Fandemonium. Go to VizioFanzone.com and outshout your rival to push your team to victory. And in part by Chevrolet, find new roads. Coke Zero, with real Coke taste and zero compromise, Coke Zero lets you enjoy everything. Direct TV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Some photos from the first 25 Rose Bowls as we celebrate the 100th Rose Bowl game here today. And here's an alert for Michigan State Spartan fans. Stanford's first four drives against Arizona State in the Pac-12 championship in Tempe, Arizona, resulted in touchdowns for the Cardinal. Gaffney again. No hole on the left side. Thrown for a loss. Kyler Ellsworth there to hit him. You go back to that opening drive that you were talking about, Brent. A little bit of everything for Stanford. They hit the big deep ball here to Michael Rector. Big third down by Kevin Hogan. He keeps it, gets just enough to keep the drive alive. And then the toughness of Tyler Gaffney bounces off of Isaiah Lewis and into the end zone on seven place, 77 yard drive. And because of that, it's a big drive here early for the Spartans defense. So we mentioned Ellsworth for the first time. Oh, make it the second time. Remember, he was the protector on the kickoff, but he's made his first impact on defense as he throws Gaffney for a loss. And now on second down, Hogan going deep and incomplete at midfield. Rector the intended target. That's the matchup that they want, not just to Michael Rector, but you're going to see a lot of this. They already hit the deep ball to Rector against the corner. Now they're looking to try to get Rector down at the bottom here against a safety. The safeties are about 8 to 10 yards off the ball, making it easier man-to-man -to, -man to be able to attack them, where the corners are up tight in press coverage. You'll see more of that from Stanford as the game goes on. Third and long, and Wilkerson returns as the running back. A flag prior to the snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 76. Five yard penalty. Third down. Now, looking at Defee reminds me that before the game, Herbie, I had a chance to talk to the entire officiating crew, and they said, You know what's different? Remember now, they're from the Big 12. They're going to huddle in this game. And we said, What's a huddle? Because if you think about the Big 12, Baylor, many of those folks coming off that game, they just line up and look to the sideline. We're not used to seeing huddles. Third down and a bunch after the penalty. Quick throw to the outside and nothing doing. Stanford forced a punt. Rector was swallowed on that reception. That is a great play by Denard, the Jim Thorpe Award winner, the top defensive back in the country. And that's a great bounce back drive for the Spartans. They get a three and out, and they not only get a three and out, but they pin Stanford deep in their own territory and should get outstanding field position here for Connor Cook. And this could well wind up being a game of field position. Kings is back deep to return this, and the punter for Stanford is Ben Ryan. Kings has to drift back. Beautiful punt. Fields it inside the 30-yard line and can't escape the gunner. It looked like a moment like he might tear free, but that's all the way back to the 20-yard line. That is a big-time punt, and Ronnie Harris was the defensive back and gunner who was all over the return man that time. We'll take a break. Field position, and there's the injured player firing him up on the sideline. When the cable company keeps you on hold, you feel trapped. When you feel trapped, you need to feel free. When you need to feel free, you try hang gliding. When you try hang gliding, you crash into things. When you crash into things, the grid goes down. When the grid goes down, crime goes up. And when crime goes up, your dad gets punched over a can of soup. Don't have your dad get punched over a can of soup. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. This is the Quicksilver Cashback card from Capital One. It's not the fumbling around with rotating categories card. It's not the getting blindsided by limits card. It's the no game playing, no earning limit having, geek bomb throwing, give me the ball and I'll take it to the house, cashback card. This is the Quicksilver Cash card from Capital One. 
Unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere, every single day. So let me ask you, what's in your wallet? We're now in the approach phase, everything looking good. Velocity 1200 you're looking great, Dingle. You're bad, Jake. Still looking very good. 1400 feet. Funny thing happens when you shoot from the moon. Uh, that's affirmative. You get there. You're a Delta landing helmet. The all new Cadillac CTS, the 2014 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Game-changing, superior performance when it counts. Goodyear more driven. The beauty of Southern California on a New Year's Day, 2014. Well, we mentioned Men Gardner over there on the sideline. And yes, he has put on his pads. Now, he can't play. He was injured against Oregon State. And in last year's Rose Bowl, Herbie, you might recall, he had a half dozen tackles. And here comes Michigan State. And nothing doing on that first down run. David Perry makes the stop. Yeah, going back to Gardner, what, what a tremendous leader. It's amazing. How many times have you seen a guy get hurt with a month of football to be played and still become an all-conference player? I mean, he has had a, not just a great year, a brilliant career here. And a guy that didn't have any scholarship offers uh, coming out of high school outside of Stanford. Just a tremendous leader and a big part of this team after the injury, just providing the leadership. Second down, and Cook is going to air it out to the near side, and that is complete to King. Now, he is the young man who was driven back on that 60-yard punt, and it completely surprised him. I think it did, and I think he let the ball play him. He, he did a poor job of judging the football. By the time he caught it, he was running backwards. It ended up uh, being a, ne a negative three with the return, but he makes up for it there. That was a tremendous effort, not just to make the catch. Absolutely. Did you see the effort to dive there and lead with the football? That picked up the first down there on second down and long for the Spartans. So the ball is out to the 32-yard line. Cook moves the pocket to the right and snaps it off. Complete to Lippett. Tony Lippett. Hey. See the blitz coming to the right. You notice again, Connor Cook is rolling here. He's going to roll right into the blitz. It's going to be coming right here from his face, but it's picked up by Langford there, and he gets the ball out quickly. How many times early in this game are we seeing Connor Cook rolling right and rolling left away from the pressure? And I believe Michigan State came into this game respecting Stanford's ability to stop the run. They're going to have to throw it tonight to be able to set up Jeremy Langford in the running game. Yeah, and Herbie Cook is 3 of 4 here in the early going. There's a draw play with Langford, and he comes across the midfield on first down before Shane Scove can hit him. You're going to see Shane Scove in the middle of this defense. He takes on the fullback, Pendleton. It'll be a good matchup. Pendleton go, going low there, and you'll never see 11 stop chasing the football. He's one of the more tenacious, more aggressive linebackers, not just in the Pac-12, but in the country. Doesn't have the, the most gifted physical skills, but makes up for it for, with awareness and instincts and Tremendous attitude leading this defense. So Pendleton, the fullback, and Lankford. And Lankford will now motion out of the backfield. And Cook is going to swing it right to him. And Scove slowed him up and helped him ride on that second down. And a couple of penalty flags come flying on the play. Yeah, it looked like a late hit by Michigan State. Just talked about Pendleton, the fullback, how aggressive he is. He might have been a little too aggressive after, after the, the whistle. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense number 37. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. It'll be third down. And that's exactly who it was, Harvey. Yeah, it looked like, a, you know, it was, it was a play that was defended very well by Stanford. They do a good job, not just with Scove, but the receivers getting off it. It comes late right at Ed Reynolds, 29. Whistle's blown, plays dead, and that's a mental mistake. That'll drive... Mark D'Antonio and his offensive staff crazy. They tried to get a little continuity, get a little rhythm going in the offense, and a mental mistake like that just can kill you. Third and 23, the ball pushed all the way back to the Spartan 34-yard line.
Stanford rushes three. And it's incomplete. Cook was forced out of the pocket on a three-man rush and thought he had a quick, easy pitch to Langford, but it was Henry Anderson who was bringing the heat. Henry Anderson is 6'6", 295 pounds. He's on one side. Josh Morrow at 6'6", 282 on the other. They're long and they're athletic. You would think rushing three and dropping eight, he'd have plenty of time. But do not underestimate the quickness and the length of this Stanford front. So now it will be the Spartan punter, Mike Sadler again. And guess who's deep? A familiar name, Barry Sanders. And yes, he is the son of the legend. High booming punt, and here comes Young Sanders driven back down to the 12-yard line. Couldn't find any daylight, and Tabor Pepper, the long snapper, able to get down the field and make the stop. It's always a plus if you've got a good athlete as your long snapper. You're watching the 2014 Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio on ESPN. The Wright brothers started in a garage. Amazon started in a garage. Hewlett Packard and Disney both started in garages. Mattel started in a garage. The Ramones started in a garage. My point, you never know what kind of greatness can come out of an American garage. Introducing the 2014 Motor Trend Car of the Year, the all new Cadillac CTS. Ain't garages great? Your mama's got nothing on me. Your daddy's got nothing on me. Why would you ever need to eat nachos on the go? Let's say her parents came home early. That's one reason. The new grilled stuffed nacho for $129 at Taco Bell. Everything you love about nachos grilled up in an all new way. Take the nachos and run. You're saying I can get AT&T's network with a data plan and unlimited talk and text for as low as $45 a month? $45 a month. Wow. No annual contract? No annual contract. No long-term agreement? No long-term agreement. Really? Really. OK, so what's the catch? There is no catch. OK, I'm obviously getting nowhere with you. I'm going to need to speak with the supervisor. I am the supervisor. Oh, finally, someone I can talk to. It's not complicated. New smartphone plans starting at $45 a month with no annual contract, only from AT&T. The grounds thaw, and legends warm up. Anticipation swells, and azaleas bloom. There will be green everywhere, but it won't be spring until the Masters. Here's what they're missing with the suspension of Max Bullock. Yeah, just, uh, just an amazing player. 40 straight starts for this defense. Uh, an extension of Pat Narduzzi as a leader of the defense, understanding the scheme, how to attack offenses, tendencies from offenses. So not only do you lose his physicality, but you really lose uh, just the understanding and the leader in the middle of that defense. We're keeping an eye on Kyler Ellsworth, 41, to see how he steps up today. Well, the Spartans shut down Stanford on that last drive and Gaffney will get the first carry behind Hewitt big hole 25 30 40 and Hewitt led the way and Gaffney makes it to the 36 yard line before Denard and Jones can bring him down and watch the block here by Hewitt 85 also De uh, Devin Kajust involved in opening that play up and he bounces it to the outside there in a hurry that play opened up it looked like Michigan State had it bottled up but again the quickness and acceleration of Tyler Gaffney he's 6 225 pounds but he can pull away from you you see they took a chance they kind of shot a gap there with Nico Allen, but Hewitt sustained that block and it opened it up there. Big hole there for Gaffney. 47 yard run. Stanford now checking the sideline. So David Shaw burns a timeout here, and that'll give us a chance to mention what's next on ESPN because two teams will be making their BCS debut Bryce Petty and the Baylor Bears face Blake Bortles and the Central Florida Golden Knights. That's a Tostitos Fiesta Bowl tonight at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. And if you haven't seen Blake Bortles, it's worth checking out. 
One night I watched Steve Herbie and I was amazed at how good he was. And I've always liked George O'Leary as a coach. So Baylor, a big favorite in that game, better not take this yeah. team too easily. And there's always one of the BCS bowl games where one of the teams maybe doesn't necessarily respect their opponent and they get they get embarrassed. That's going to be the challenge for Baylor. UCF is a great football team with an outstanding coach in George O'Leary and Blake Bortles, as you said. Some people feel that if he comes out, could be one of the first quarterbacks taken uh, in the draft can, this uh, this spring. So Hewitt is now set in front of Wilkerson, who has replaced Gaffney after that big run. Play action, first down. Deep arm, one-on-one -on -one incomplete. Over through the receiver. And he had a man breaking for the end zone. That was Ty Montgomery covered by Waynes of Michigan State. You know, they got pressure to him there. He was waiting. The play took a little bit of time to develop. He had some receivers downfield, but eventually Michigan State got there. I think it was Tyler Hoover, number 91, that eventually got there. And I think he actually affected the pass and caused that ball to kind of float up into the air. Back in the gun on second down and 10. Keeping it all the way. And again, trying to fumble. Loose ball. Spartans on it. And it looked like Danikos Allen, fabulous player from Michigan State, was down there. He forced the fumble when it came loose. But they retained possession, the Cardinal. And it looked like Michigan State was going to recover this, so there was some great hustle here by the Cardinals. Well, Michigan State had the first two, maybe even three defenders there all over the football. Danico Allen, the leader, the leading tackler, is right there. Drone, actually, I think 42, gets a hand on the ball and puts it in the air. Isaiah Lewis had his hands on it, misses it. There's Hoover with a chance to recover it. Isaiah Lewis has another chance. It looked like Denard was in there. It looked like Drone hustling there knocked that ball loose. Yeah, and, and Matt, Herbie, it's a first down yeah. across the 25-yard line, and a rested Gaffney returns, and now Coach Shaw, who calls the plays, has gone to one of his jumbo looks. And frequently, this is Kamatule who comes in. Take a look at that beef, folks. And he's bringing even more beef over to that left side. Hewitt headed there. Gaffney, though, tried to cut away from it. And the Spartans weren't fooled. And that was Denard making another stop. Yeah, they, and they slanted that defensive line. Remember, they've had three and a half weeks to prep for this. You know, they've heard all about Stanford and that jumbo package and the tendencies that come with that. And part of what David Shaw will do early in a game is he'll give you formations. And he's very interested to see how you react. And you might win a battle, but he will come back with a war and try to adjust and make a play and either throw off of it or break a tendency off a certain formation. He was an assistant coach in the National Football League for nine years. Play action. Incomplete. So he and Montgomery were not on the same page that time. So we take a look at the David Shaw background. And those are the NFL teams that he coached for. Remember, he was also a wide receiver in the league. His father, Willie Shaw, who's on the sideline, he was a lifer, folks. And he had two terms at Stanford. And that's where David grew up, a Stanford fan. So here we go now on a third down against this Spartan defense. Inside pitch. And that was Wilkerson, and he is short of the first down. Williamson up to make the stop. R.J. Williamson in there in a nickel package does a good job. I, I think initially it may have caught Michigan State off guard. A little shuffle pass. See, he gets underneath to Nico Salen. Yankee picks him up. But a good awareness that time by the sophomore out of Dayton, Ohio, comes up and makes the play and run support and forces his field goal. And so, Herbie, here is Jordan Williamson. Inside of 50 yards, he's 16 of 18. This will be his 19th attempt because it's a 34-yarder. The right hash, he curls it in. Stanford 
with a touchdown and now a field goal and they lead the Spartans 10 nothing with a minute 40 remaining in our first quarter. So if you go back to 1988 that was the last time that the Spartans were in the Rose Bowl game and we mentioned Lorenzo White to introduce Connor Cook. He had two TDs in the first half and they went out 14 3. But Rodney Pete brought them back and it was John Langlow kicking the game winning field goal. Michigan State won it 2017 and Percy Snow was the MVP as we take a look at their Rose Bowl history. Back in the 50s, Herbie, they were an awesome football team up in East Lansing. My dad. Take actually, my word for it. I believe you. My, my dad was a freshman at Ohio State in 57 and a captain in 60. And you can see it was a long dry spell there from 66 to 88 and even longer to get to this Rose Bowl here today and has their fan base pretty excited. And a lot of them came out here. Huge, huge representation from the Spartans. So Shelton is back deep again with Ellsworth. And the Spartan fans are a little quiet because Michigan State only gave up 29 first quarter points all season. Folks, that's 13 games, and already the favorite Cardinal have put 10 up. You know, it's the second time in the last 28 games that they've given up double-digit points in the first quarter. So they're, this is uncharted territory for this unit. And Shelton not given a chance. Out it will come to the 25-yard line. And so a lot of pressure now on young Connor Cook. He's from... Walsh Jesuit High School in Hinckley, Ohio. Yeah, up in the Cleveland area. It, he, you know, he at this point, they've had 11 offensive plays. That's it in the first quarter. They've run the ball five times, thrown it six. They've only run for 17 yards. Coming in, I think we all knew that it would be a challenge for them to run the ball against this Stanford front seven. Their best bet is going to be to put the ball in the hands of Connor Cook here, and he's going to have to make some plays through the air and rely on his wide receivers to be able to find holes in zone and be able to break away from man-to-man -man coverage. Back in the gun. Lankford, nothing doing against the middle of that Stanford front. So, Herbie, I think we're seeing why when this game was posted, the Cardinal was favored for about a field goal, and it has risen almost every day. And now they go off as a seven-point favorite at kickoff time. There's a lot of respect out in Nevada yeah. for Stanford. <laughs> there, there should be. These guys defensively, you look at them and you think, well, how are they able to do it every week against the run? They run an NFL scheme. They, they play a 3-4. The defensive line eats up the offensive line, and it frees those linebackers to run to the football against the run game. From the gun, Cook can't find an open target, and he is sacked at the 24-yard line. That was Blake Luters. Well, they are disguising things when they know that Cook's going to go back there. This time, they are showing they're going to bring pressure, and eventually, they just rush three. See a linebacker there kind of coming in a little bit late there, but they're disguising it until Kevin Anderson helps out 48, but they call this plastering their receivers. Try to find somebody to throw the football to. That's what Connor Cook's looking into. That's why he's holding on to it. That was the goal of Derek Mason, the defensive coordinator. Make Connor Cook hold on to the football, and then you can get the pressure to him. The Spartans bunch receivers to the right. Cook, middle a deflection could have been intercepted but Kings cut the ricochet for the Spartans boy Connor Cook got away with one there boy right through the hands of Kevin Anderson his sophomore he sits back in zone and I don't think Cook ever saw him he threw it right into his chest it goes off of his hands and into the air and there's Kings alert to be able to recognize the football and he picks up a first down the Spartans got away with one there 14 yards and thank you very much as we come <laughs> to the end. You got to be lucky once in a while. Absolutely. Right? End of our first quarter here in Pasadena. And we're back after these messages. You're watching the granddaddy of them all presented by Vizio on ESPN.
You're a potato. The light, crispy taste of Lay's potato chips. Mm. One taste, and you're in love. A ah, little secret, okay? Mm hmm steering wheel. This is 8.4 inches of go anywhere. This is 20 inches of water fording talent. This is armor. This is 31 miles per gallon highway. This is the freedom to keep chasing all the horizons you want. Introducing the all new Jeep Cherokee. Well qualified lessees can lease the all new 2014 Jeep Cherokee Sport for $259 a month. What was I? I'm sure that line works on every girl. <laughs> Tell you what, I, I usually don't do this. But... Sure, Tuesday's good. Or Wednesday. Call me. The all new 2014 Corolla. The difference is in the style. Toyota, vayamos juntos. Product don't ready through app. Herbie, you and I are going to talk all game long about number 25 for Stanford, Tyler Gaffney. And as you pointed out, when he came from baseball, he's a little bit tougher than we thought. Yeah, really wondered, filling the shoes of Stephon Taylor, how he would do. He's had such a big year. Now Connor Cook going deep down that far sideline, incomplete. It was on a first and ten to start the second quarter from the 38-yard line. Wayne Lyons with coverage. Yeah, and, and Michigan State, I think, this is part of what they have to be able to do is stretch the field, take some chances. When you roll your quarterback out, theoretically, you're, you're becoming a, a quarterback that's reading half the field. So you don't have as many receivers to be able to choose from. That time they rolled him right, trying to test the discipline of the Stanford defense. But that time, Wayne Lyons stride for stride in good position with the receiver. Second and 10, and the fullback Pendleton in as one of the bodyguards. Cook is going to air it out again. Snaps it off complete into the middle and that was Tony Lippett the junior from Detroit Michigan he went to Crockett High School and you've got a twist up front movement from the linebackers watch you have both their two best players Murphy and also you have Scove coming on the blitz but because it's picked up and actually Murphy didn't get picked up but because you had Scove picked up and the quarterback Cook was able to get the ball out of his hands quickly huge void underneath the coverage where Derek Mason took a chance by bringing both of his linebackers so it's a first down across the 40 yard line for Sparty fake the end around off the play action Cook tried to buy time, picks up the running back, Lankford. And Lankford beats a couple of tacklers. Did a very powerful job of running, but tacklers three and four got there, and Blake Luters was bringing him down. Well, that's just too slow developing. He telegraphed the screen, the entire Stanford defense moving over in that direction. Lankford, pretty heroic effort there just to be able to pick up a, a couple yards thought at one point because it was taking so long you might see Cook just throw it into the feet of Langford but he decided to give him the football and he ended up picking up at least a few yards second down and eight three receivers off to the field or the left side Cook keeping it all the way at a quarterback draw and did not fool the Cardinal that time 
as number 48, Kevin Anderson. We've mentioned his name a couple of times. Junior from Palo Alto, California, makes the stop. Well, anytime an, uh, an offense goes empty, that's one thing you have to be aware of. But it's good awareness here by Anderson. He recognizes it right a quick, collapses down in a hurry. And if he doesn't make that decision, then you at that time you will see Cook, who can surprise you with some speed. He would have definitely picked up a first down. Third down and six. Pendleton, and now Langford motions out. Cook can't find an open receiver. Checks back. Now he completes it to Pendleton, the fullback. And he's across the 15-yard line for a first down before Tarpley can bring him down. I was impressed with Cook's patience when he looked behind him he to did. make sure he didn't have somebody on his backside. Uh, he's felt a lot of pressure. He actually looks over his right shoulder. He steps up into the pocket and he starts to bail. And then look right over his right shoulder. Where's Murphy? Where the heck is 93? He realizes he's got a chance. <laughs> and how about Pendleton this time making the catch after the penalty that put Michigan State way, way back in their own territory. Good job by Cook and a nice hands there by the fullback. So the Spartans barge to the red zone. Langford, daylight. And he's to the six-yard line. Lions and Richards with the stop. They overload the right side. They bring a tackle over. You're thinking that everybody's going to flow to the offense's right. The defense is thinking the same thing. It's a design cutback the other way. Michael Dennis, the left tackle, or left uh, the tight end who's lined up as a left tackle, does a good job of sealing Shane Scove, and that opened up on the backside there for the Michigan State offense. Lippitt and Fowler are in on this side. Second down and short. Langford again that hole on the left side, but it closes quickly and he's near the three-yard line And that was a stop that was made by a man of and he was our defensive most valuable player last year. Remember that interception yeah, in the late fourth in the game, quarter against sure the was. Badgers. He's had a, a great career. This Michigan State offense all of a sudden starting to find themselves and starting to settle down. They've made some plays on this drive through the air, on the ground. This is tough sledding. You start to try to run the football against Stanford inside the 10 and 5-yard line. It's a tough thing to do, but they've had some success here on these last couple plays. They've been finding some daylight early on the left side. Now, Lankford is lined up on the right side. A little bit of an option look with Cook. He's going to step back, and he's forced to throw it away. Well, I, I don't think that, that that was a a design play, but I think he started to stretch that play out, and he had nowhere to go. And instead of taking a four or five yard loss or pitching it to Langford, he just kept bailing and bailing and just said to heck with it. Let's take a chance and throw it away and hope we don't get called for an illegal man downfield. But that was a design speed option. Second down and goal from the four yard line. Langford, the running back, as they break the huddle. Two receivers are off to the left for Cook. And they're going to run Fowler and nothing doing. A terrific play by Kevin Anderson. Yeah. My goodness, he's made several big plays. Yeah, he dropped the interception, but he's had some big plays here on this drive. This time, boy, what a great job of just fighting through the, the tight end this time, Michael Dennis. He gets through him. He's Dennis is a big guy. He's really an offensive tackle with 300 pounds, but he wears 94. He fought him. He got separation, and that's what allowed him to get upfield. I told you, it is tough to run the football on Stanford inside this 10-yard line. So they're back at the nine, and now you would think that they would throw throw off play action on this third down straight drop back and too high but a penalty will give the Spartans a fresh set of downs Wayne Lyons all over the receiver what it's Michigan State catch a break there that ball was thrown high and I don't think the receiver had a chance to make a play on it at all that ball sailed well well over the head of Kings and if they end up getting this call that's a big break for Michigan State Kings has been pretty active in this game plan. You can see, you know, they try to take a one-on-one -on -one break inside technique by the corner Lions, and that ball again, whether whether Lions touched him or not, that ball is going to sail well over the head of Kings. He wouldn't have had a chance, but they get the call. 
So here is the first and goal for the Spartans, and here's Langford behind Pendleton. A great block. Touchdown, Michigan State. Back in it. But what a block by the fullback, Pendleton. The big fullback had a heck of a drive, didn't he? He really did. Final he? football, made some big blocks. Led Langford here. He takes on Joe Hemscott, 40, who's trying to seal the edge. He pins him to the inside. And you get Langford to the corner, and a safety like Jordan Richards will not be able to slow him down from getting to the corner for a touchdown. Freshman Michael Geiger from Toledo, Ohio, on for the extra point for the Spartans. Back within three. Jeremy Langford, once a defensive back from Michigan State, converted to become the running back. Into the end zone for the Spartans. Bringing popcorn to game day is like going for a tie. Nobody wins. Introducing Taco Bell's Variety Taco 12-Pack, six Doritos Locos Tacos, and six Classic Crunchy Tacos. A game day tradition since right now. Practicing the fundamentals, that's the key to success. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on proven principles, facing challenges together to help reach your financial goals. When I first started shopping for a hybrid, I didn't even look at anything else. I just assumed you went and bought a Prius. So this time around, we were able to do some research, and we ended up getting a Ford, which we love. It's been a wonderful switch. It has everything that you could want in a car. It's the most fun to drive because it's the most like, high-tech inside. I think this C-Max can run circles around the Prius. The biggest difference would definitely be the acceleration of the car. If you can get someone to test drive a C-Max, they would end up buying this more times than not. What is it? Is it what she wears? How he speaks? Is it her timing? This guy's idea of a good time, or that one time he did that? Is it because she's a woman? Come on now. How about those moves, those looks, his style? Is it because they scare us, surprise us, make us uncomfortable? Like, really uncomfortable? Whatever it is, you know it when you see it. Here's the being one of a kind. This is the Quicksilver Cashback card from Capital One. It's not the limit the cash I earn every month card. It's not the I only earn decent rewards at the gas station card. It's the no games, no sign.